All right, everyone, over the last week, I've been putting this device right here. This is the UmiDigi A1 Pro through the paces. Uh, I've been using it extensively, and uh, tonight I'm ready to share with you my thoughts on this device so far. So, first thing we can talk about is the price. So this is available at gearbest.com for around $100 to $120. Um, so I'll leave a link down in the description for the best price I can find on it. And uh, I gotta be honest with you, there are some fantastic things about this device, but there are also definitely some sacrifices for that price. We're going to go ahead and talk about all of those things. All right, so the first area I want to talk about is the build quality of the A1 Pro. So right away, you'll notice on the back that this has uh, a very premium look to it. So um, it looks like a glass back, like a lot of the more expensive flagship devices that are coming out right now. However, this is in fact plastic. So um, it's cool that it looks like it's glass, um, but it's not actually glass. Uh, so that's both a positive and a negative there. So you can see we do have a fingerprint sensor as well as our dual camera setup on the back. We'll talk more about those cameras. We also have that flash on the back. Over here we have our power button uh, right here and our volume rocker. Um, so these are plastic as well as, long as, as, well as the bezel. Um, on the bottom, we have a headphone jack. Huge thumbs up for UmiDigi for keeping the headphone jack. We have our Type-C charging. Also a thumbs up for a budget-friendly device, so that's great. Um, on the top, we have our hybrid SIM tray, so that is both a SIM tray and an SD card tray, so you can do dual SIMs or one SIM, one nano SIM, and a micro SD card. So this comes with 16 gigs of onboard storage, um, which you will probably want to expand, obviously, and yes, you can use an SD card as adoptable storage. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about this display on the A1 Pro. So you can see here that we do have an 18 by nine aspect ratio. This is a 5.5 inch display. It is a 720p HD display. So that is both a positive and negative. Uh, for this price point, um, I would expect at least a 720p display. A 1080p display would have been nice, but uh, honestly, it's not too bad. If I had a complaint about the display, honestly, it is the brightness. So this does not get particularly bright. So that would just be a small complaint. Um, in bright daylight, you can still see it, but it, you, you are going to have to look a little bit uh, harder at this device versus something like this one here. So this is my iPhone 8 Plus. Um, one thing I also want to mention here is this is also a 5.5 inch display, but you can see clearly that the iPhone 8 Plus does have a larger display. Now in terms of size, you can see obviously this has a case on it, but regardless, the UmiDigi A1 Pro is definitely a much more one-handed friendly device. The iPhone 8 Plus was a huge phone at one point, but now it's kind of become more of the norm. Uh, so this does have that 18 by nine aspect ratio as well. And overall, I do like for this price point, the display. All right, so now it's time to talk about the performance of this device. So you can see that right here, it says we have a MediaTek 6739 processor. Now that's a brand new processor from MediaTek. It's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz and also three gigs of RAM on board. So we're gonna go up here into the history of Geekbench 4 and you can see our multi-core and single core score. So we have a single core score of 627 or 626 and a multi-core score of 1629. So what does that mean? in day-to-day -day usage? Well, uh, what I can say is that this is not a super high-performing phone. Uh, that is to say, uh, it will hiccup on, a, on occasion, so you can see as we're going through here that it's not a super fast phone. Now, is it doable? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can definitely run uh, small light games on it. My son was playing a bunch of Star Wars on it earlier tonight. Uh, obviously, social media runs fine. It's just that you are gonna get hiccups in the performance from time to time and uh, it is noticeable. So it's not terrible, but you will definitely feel a little bit of slowness uh, from now, from time to time. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the software on this device. You can see here that we're running Android 8.1 with the April security patch. So it's pretty much up to date in terms of updates. Now, obviously it's not running Android P, but no phone that's come out right now is running Android P with the exception of Pixel phones. Um, so that is fantastic. Android 8.1, April security patch, that's a huge thumbs up. Now, another great thing about this software is that it's basically running just stock Android. So you'll notice there really is almost nothing 
running on top of Android 8.1. So that is both a positive and negative. Obviously that means that there's a lot of missing features that you might get on more expensive devices, but that also means there's not a bunch of bloatware on here as well. So a couple of things worth mentioning that they have outside of basic stock Android is this face unlock. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that working real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the phone off, just bring it up to the lock screen and take a look at the device and you can see that it opened right up. So the face unlock actually surprisingly works very, very well. Now we do also have a fingerprint sensor on the back, so I'll go ahead and use that now as well. And you can see that the, it actually is a little bit slower to unlock the phone with the fingerprint sensor versus the face unlock, which is pretty abnormal really. Um, but face unlock works very well. The fingerprint sensor works, it's just not super fast. Um, so it's nice that it has that though. So we do also have DuraSpeed, so that's something slightly different that you wouldn't get on stock Android. And basically what that does is that it kind of manages the RAM in the background while you're doing something intensive. Maybe you are playing a game and and uh, you don't want uh, things running in the background to kind of slow down your game, you can turn on DuraSpeed and it helps with the RAM management while you're playing the game. So that is also great. Now, when we go into the apps, um, you can see basically anything that's on here uh, is pretty much that's not stock Android. It was something that I put on there. Uh, so. Basically, you're just getting stock Android 8.1, so you can either love that or hate that. That's what you get on the One Pro. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about these dual cameras on the A1 Pro. So we have a 13 and five megapixel camera on the back. And I'll be honest with you, it's kind of a mixed bag when it comes to the cameras. Now, it does actually take some pretty solid uh, photos. I'm not gonna lie, I actually kind of like some of the photos that it takes. Now, a couple of complaints I have about it now though are the fact that you can see that there is definitely some shutter lag there. So that is one complaint I have about uh, the cameras on this device. The second thing is the video quality isn't necessarily great. Um, it's not terrible, but I'll go ahead and show you some of that footage as well. And then this one, the Bokeh. So it does have dual cameras, but I'm pretty certain that it's really kind of a fake second camera. So it says 13 and five megapixels, um, but with Bokeh, if it does actually use it, uh, basically all it does with Bokeh is it centers on whatever it is that you focused on and blurs out the rest. Um, it doesn't work as well or even close to as well as other devices with bokeh effect and dual camera setup. So uh, you might as well forget the dual cameras because that bokeh just isn't all that great. Um, but overall, I think that the still images are f fairly decent. Um, I actually don't have too many complaints about the still images with this device. Now, we have a five megapixel camera up front and it's very usable. Um, even nighttime shots with the cameras aren't too bad. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you those and uh, you can kind of judge for yourself. So the last major area that I want to talk about is the battery life. So battery life wise, we have a 3150 milliamp hour battery in here and uh, it does charge up via type C. So that is a thumbs up there. Uh, also, it does come with a two amp fast charger in the box. Now the version I have came with a European plug. So uh, obviously if you live in the US, you're gonna need an adapter. Uh, but as far as battery life goes, generally speaking, uh, you can see here that I'm currently at 29% now. Now, today I didn't use it quite as much as I've been using it other days, uh, but in general I'm getting around five hours of screen on time, so that's mediocre, it's not great, it's not terrible, uh, and that's been pretty typical. Usually I'm finishing most days with about 20% of battery life, so I can typically get through a full day, um, and uh, even if you can't get through a full day, it does have fast charging, so a two amp fast charging adapter, uh, so that's pretty good. Um, overall, battery life, it's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. 
All right, so before we finish this video, I wanna mention a couple of other nice features that the Umi Digi A1 Pro has. One is dual band Wi-Fi, so it does have both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, so that's great. Um, and another thing that it has that a lot of phones coming from China don't have is basically all of the major antennas you would need for GSM networks inside the United States. So it has bands like 4, 5, 12, 17, so it will work with both Cricket and AT&T on all their bands. So that is also a very good thing. So is the Umi Digi A1 Pro worth the price? Well, I would say yes. I definitely think it is. It's a phone worth considering. Now, are there sacrifices? Yes, there are definitely sacrifices you're going to have to make with the A1 Pro. One would be the video quality, the shutter lag on the camera, uh, not the fastest fingerprint sensor in the world, but at least it has it. Um, and overall, I think this is a solid phone. Performance-wise, you're definitely going to experience some lag from time to time, but that's kind of typical for a phone at this price point. I wish it had a Snapdragon Four, you know, 400 series processor. It doesn't. It has a MediaTek processor and they saved some money in order to use that MediaTek processor. It still works fine, uh, but Snapdragon 400 series processors definitely work a little bit better. So with that being said, I do think this is a phone definitely worth considering, especially at that $110, $100 to $120 price point right now. It's available for $110. So check it out in the links below. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.